Hey, you clicked on my video. Appreciate it. Now be sure to like the video and subscribe to the page. Long enough to cover the subject and short enough to keep it interesting. Welcome to Out of My League. I'm Nick Diaz. Emotions are overrated. Okay, they're not completely overrated, but they're a little overrated. They're overrated in this sense. They're unreliable. Emotions are totally and utterly unreliable. So when your parents told you when you were younger, control your emotions, well, it turns out they didn't actually explain further what the hell that meant because here's the thing. You cannot control your emotions. You cannot. Uh, if a hundred years of psychology has proven a few things, one of them is you cannot control what you feel. Feelings enter and exit your mind every day and there's not a damn thing you can do about it. Here's the problem that LSU fans are feeling right now. Going into this Arkansas game after playing Alabama, LSU has always had a letdown spot, an emotional come down, if you will. And after beating Bama for only the third time in 12 years, first time since 2010 entire stadium, and the way in which you did it, LSU fans are worried that this will happen again. And I have bad news for LSU fans. You're right to be worried. You're right. Because there will be an emotional letdown for these players on this coming Saturday. And to make matters worse, it's at 11 a.m. in 30 degree weather. Because you can't control your emotions, especially after being so emotional. Now, what your parents probably meant to tell you as a kid, as you were sitting there crying in the aisles of Toys R Us because you weren't getting your favorite water gun, what they were really trying to tell you is that, Sonny... Stop showing your emotions. Feelings should not control your actions. Well, I don't feel like doing this today. Well, last time I checked, there is no one trying to tie you down to a chair and locking you in the room from doing it. No excuses. See, the problem that Les Miles had with Arkansas is that he was a coach who thrived on emotion. Kind of like Ed Ogeron. He built up that Alabama game and a lot of big games for the most part, and he relied on emotions. And when you rely on the unreliable, you get what's coming to you. Ed Ogeron, well, he actually had no real problem for the most part against Arkansas, or really any big game for that most part, until he was, you know, his last season in 2021. Now, how can Ed Ogeron not have that problem with Arkansas or A&M or other teams after a big game when he was the epitome of a rah-rah coach? Well, because Ed Ogeron did something completely different than Les Miles. He didn't beat the shit out of his teams at practice. Ed Ogeron actually had lighter, shorter practices. Now, you want to talk about emotional letdown after Bama, try physical letdown on top of the emotion. Les had long, three-hour, full-padded practices every Wednesday, while Coach O, he wasn't afraid to cut practice early if he saw his team kind of losing their legs a little. Now, Brian Kelly is opposite in both ways, from both of those men in so many ways. And I don't have to tell you everything what that is, but Brian Kelly has never had long practices. Matter of fact, his practices are shorter than most, but they are extremely, extremely efficient. And Brian Kelly, he comes from a style of coaching that is, well, let's just say, intellectual your thoughts affect you know your actions right that affect your physiological response so we've been we've been working on how we think since day one it becomes a trap game if you're not thinking right we'll get our guys thinking the right way and we'll prepare the right way this is about a consistency if they want to be a consistent program they'll think the right way about this game i don't speak that language you know what is reliable? What you do, not what you feel. So I'll tell you my favorite story. Uh, one of my favorite stories. The Pittsburgh Steelers of the 1970s. They were a dynasty. No team in, to this day had won four Super Bowls in a six-year period. Mean Joe Green, Terry Bradshaw, nasty defense, fighting and clawing at each other. The epitome of tough guys. Well, did you know that their head coach, Chuck Knoll, he never once raised his voice. Chuck Knoll never once gave a halftime speech. Chuck Knoll never once gave a rousing pregame speech. Not once. Never. 
Never even came close. Never even came close to raising his voice unless he was yelling across the practice field so someone could hear him. He was like Dave Aranda before Dave Aranda. Matter of fact, he discouraged his players from pumping each other up on the sidelines. He discouraged it. If he would see somebody trying to clap and yell and, uh, you know, pump somebody up, say, come on, guys, we can do it. He would turn around in the middle of the game and say, we'll have none of that crap around here. We don't do that stuff around here. Because the reason why you're a better football team week to week is not because you were motivated to win the big game. It was because of your practice habits. It was your fundamentals that you perfected all offseason. Your study habits and memorizing your playbook. His famous line that he would tell every Steelers player was, if I have to motivate you, I will fire you. You know, I've never been a guy that that subscribes to the theory that it's my job uh, to motivate them. Um, It's their job to motivate themselves. So building that kind of intrinsic motivation through their preparation is my job. I need to prepare them. That's my job. And through preparation, uh, they'll build confidence that they're ready to play. But if I got to go give rah-rah speeches and do all that kind of stuff, uh, we're going to be an up-and-down football team. Brian Kelly is of the same school of thought. So look. Can LSU lose this game to Arkansas? Of course they can. The line is at three and a half as of Thursday afternoon. Maybe it'll go up. Uh, It's on the road in the SEC West. So, yeah, they can lose the game, of course. Now, I'm no Vegas expert. Not really an expert in much of anything, but especially Las Vegas. Now, a part of that line being so close is really just sort of expecting LSU to have that letdown spot like they usually do against Arkansas especially from public amateur betters. So look, I could go all over these matchups for LSU and Arkansas position by position. I could. But there's really no one matchup on the field that I think realistically give LSU a big problem on paper. I mean, you we can talk about Arkansas starting quarterback KJ Jefferson if he plays or not. Okay, fine. If he plays, all the better for Arkansas, but if you are facing KJ Jefferson, then you are facing a quarterback that is playing with his hurt throwing shoulder that also hasn't practiced all week. And if you don't play KJ Jefferson and you play a quarterback who is healthy, who's the backup, who has been practicing all week, well, then you're playing Malik Hornsby, who ain't even good at throwing the ball at all. So you're playing a one dimensional quarterback, either way. Look, Arkansas is just not a good football team right now. They're not. They have talent. They have some very good individual players, Bumper Pool, Drew Sanders, Dwight McLaughlin, who we all know, all that stuff. Rocket Sanders as well, leading rusher in the SEC, but the team isn't good. And to be honest, I think some of those players' stats are a little overinflated because the rest of their team is just not that good. Now, do I expect LSU to play perfect? No, I don't. Do I expect LSU to be as pumped up to play Arkansas as they were Alabama? Of course not. It's impossible to replicate that. And that may show in the first quarter or two on Saturday. It may show up. It may be a little sloppy because Arkansas does have a ton of emotion going into this game. But emotion doesn't last for four straight quarters. And the biggest difference is that LSU is no longer a program built on the foundation of emotion. It is a program now built on the foundation of building good habits. LSU has better athletes, they have better technique, they have better fundamentals, and they have better habits to win the game for four quarters of emotionless football. LSU wins the letdown spot against Arkansas this Saturday, 38-17. Thanks for listening to Out of My League. If you like what you heard, be sure to like, share, and subscribe, or follow me on Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, and TikTok in the description link below.